Hey folks, I'm International Master Kostya Kavutsky, and uh, today I'll be doing a video on one of the first truly great chess players of all time, uh, Giochino Greco. So Greco was born sometime around 1600 in Italy, and he, I would say, is one of the first few players uh, that we can safely consider a chess master. Uh, he was a very strong, natural attacking player. He had a clear penchant for development, developing uh, his initiative and his pieces early on in the game. And uh, in particular, he discovered quite a few things uh, and refuted some openings that I think are still considered uh, important today. So in this video, I just want to go through a couple of his most important games. And uh, if you want to see the games in full, uh, there will be a link in the description below where you can uh, check out the Lee Chess Study uh, that contains all of these and maybe even a couple of extra games as well. So in this first game he plays e4. Uh, I think he played e4 almost exclusively and he played e5 as black as well. Um, but here his opponent played b6. I think a lot of Greco's opponents uh, could be considered casual amateur players, um, but clearly they weren't uh, total fish, you know, they knew how the game worked. Uh, and I'm sure they, they were capable of finding good moves, but when it came to playing against Greco, they were typically uh, outclassed. Uh, in many of these games, they considered uh, some really risky openings. Uh, here, for example, Black played the move f5, uh, and Greco was able to, to find the refutation uh, over the board. Or maybe his analysis, you know, it's not really clear <laughs> when the game is uh, from 400 years ago, whether it was a real game or just two players analyzing and then publishing uh, their analysis later on. But in any case, he goes e takes f5 here, Black plays bishop takes g2, seemingly winning a rook, but after queen h5 check, white's attack here is just way too strong. Of course, now we know that this diagonal is one of the weakest uh, for black in the opening, and after g6, f takes g6, white is threatening to mate in one move here by pushing the pawn or taking on h7. Uh, black played knight f6, which seems like a reasonable defense, attacking the queen that's going to be giving uh, this discover check, um, but... Greco finds a fantastic solution here. I mean, already white could play the move g7 check, and after knight takes h5, take on h8, and white would have an extra queen, but Greco's solution is much stronger and much more elegant. He takes the pawn on h7, uh, black takes the queen, and then the game finishes with bishop g6 mate. So this is one line that we now know, thanks to Greco, just does not work for black. E takes f5, and white is completely winning. Um, in the next game I wanted to show... Uh, we have e4, e5, knight f3, and black goes f6. This is another move we don't really see too often nowadays, although sometimes online I'll, I'll see this in, in some blitz games. But thanks to Greco, again, we now know the refutation. Knight takes e5. This piece sacrifice is really strong. And the point is after f takes e5, queen h5 check, king e7, queen takes e5, king f7. Uh, White has sacrificed the piece, but the attack is just way too strong, and uh, Greco is just such a fantastic attacking player. He always knew how to develop pieces. Developing them with tempo is, of course, very important. And here, after bishop c4, king g6, queen f5 check, king h6, he goes d4, opening up the bishop on c1, and... Uh, developing another piece. Black had to block this check with g5, and now the real star move h4. Nowadays, everyone will find this move, but again, for the 1600s, I think this is pretty impressive. Um, where white not only includes the pawn in the attack and threatens to take on g5, but is also opening up the rook on h1, and uh, white's attack here is just uh, devastating. Black tried king g7, I don't think there was any reasonable defense anymore, and then got maiden in two after queen f7 and h6 g5, uh, double check and mate. Uh, another game that I think was actually quite instructive uh, went e4, e5, knight f3, and queen f6. This is a move I'll still see nowadays in, in tons of blitz games, and uh, the way Greco punished this move, I think, is, is really cool. He just develops normally bishop c4. Uh, we'll see in the next game he was a big fan of the Italian game, the Gioco Piano, which he had a, a hand in inventing. And uh, here, now we know that, of course, it's too early to develop the queen in the opening like this, and this should not be a good move. But uh, back then, the move wasn't totally senseless. Black now plays queen g6 and has introduced a double attack on the e4 pawn and the pawn on g2. And it's actually not so easy for white to defend both of these pawns. Knight takes e5 is not really great, because queen takes e4 uh, will come with check, but Greco's solution is, is very nice again. He just castles, aims for development, defends the g2 pawn. Uh, black grabs the pawn on e4, just consistent and following up. And now, of course, rook e1 here I think would be uh, a perfectly reasonable move, but queen takes c4, white has to make sure this piece sacrifice is working. I like Greco's move uh, a lot better. Bishop takes f7 check. And now the tactical point is that after king takes f7, knight to g5, white is just picking up the queen on e4. 
And what that basically means is white is winning back the pawn, forcing black's king to move. And after king e7, of course, black's king is in really bad shape. Uh, but the way Greco conducts the attack, I think, is, is really great. He goes rook to e1, uh, queen f4, and rook takes e5 check. Uh, forcing black now to take the bishop on f7, and white essentially plays this like a, a peace sacrifice. He's now sacrificed the bishop, he's playing for the attack, he has to get as many pieces as possible into the game, and again he goes d4, taking the center but mainly opening up the bishop on c1, hitting this queen on f4, black had to go back, queen f6, knight g5 check, king is forced out into the open with king g6, uh, and now queen d3 check. So queen f5 is obviously bad, black plays king h5, he doesn't want to walk into the discovered attack with king h6, uh, and after g4 check, black resigned here because of uh, a quick mate after king takes g4, uh, it's simply queen h3, and uh, nice checkmate to, to finish the game. So this game I actually think is quite instructive because it just shows um, how when you focus on development, a lot of times uh, eventually the tactics will, will justify uh, themselves here. Um, white is willing to give up a pawn, knowing that he's going to have bishop takes f7 uh, in in this position, but I don't think this is such an accident. I think when you develop your pieces and get this lead in development, usually the tactics are going to work out in your favor. Uh, and the last game I wanted to show today uh, is a game that takes place uh, in the Italian game, the Gioco Piano, after e4, e5, uh, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5 c3. So Greco and other Italian players were developing this opening uh, in the 17th century. This is basically one of the first openings ever in chess. And uh, this game in particular, I think everyone should know because it's uh, so instructive and, and very, very useful. Uh, and the opening itself, I actually think has some relevance today. I mean, it, this position is still being seen at uh, today's top level. Um, now, of course, most grandmasters today in this position will play d3 and opt for a more quiet Italian game. Um, but back then, of course, everyone was playing for the initiative and Greco opts for the more aggressive d4. So black is forced to take on d4, c takes d4, and play bishop b4 check. Uh, this is pretty important because if black were to just back up with the bishop to b6 here, for example, um, then white would basically be getting a very strong center for free and could already start advancing e5, d5, and just pushing their pawns forward where this would be really, really dangerous uh, for black's position. So black has to react concretely. He goes bishop b4 check, uh, white plays knight c3, and now black grabs his pawn on e4, which is actually the best move, because again, if black doesn't take this pawn, if black doesn't challenge white some way in the center, then white's pawns are just going to be way too strong. So grabbing this pawn is the only way to uh, concretely play against what white is doing, and Greco here decides to castle. This is a fantastic move. I think he played this in a number of games, realizing just how strong white's attack is uh, in exchange for the material. And uh, nowadays we know that the best move here for black is bishop takes c3, where if white recaptures the bishop, then black should play d5, uh, not just attacking white's bishop on c4, but also securing the knight on e4, opening up the bishop on c8, and then getting ready to castle next move. Um, so for that reason, instead of recapturing on c3, uh, today's theory will continue d5 where white prevents the shot from black uh, being able to play d5, keeps the attack on the bishop alive, and then prepares to play queen e2 or rook e1 in the future to put pressure on this knight. Uh, this line still has a ton of theory. It's technically considered fine for black, although black has to be really precise and know what they're doing. Um, but back then, of course, there was very little <laughs> opening theory and players just played on intuition and instinct. And so here black takes on c3 with the knight, which I think is a big mistake. Um, white goes b takes c3, and then black continues the greediness and then takes another pawn with bishop takes c3, after which black is basically lost. It would be better for black to at least return with something like bishop to e7, uh, but I, I think white still can develop a really strong initiative here, uh, specifically after the moves d5, let's say knight a5, and the shot with d6, I think is really, really strong and, and leading to just a winning attack for white. If you want some more details on this, again, check out the Lee Chess study that's uh, linked in the description below, and you can play through uh, all the variations. Uh, well, okay, 
Greco's opponent decides to grab uh, the second pawn now with bishop takes c3, and instead of saving the rook or doing something slow, Greco just continues playing for the initiative. He goes basically all in with, with queen b3 here. Um, initiating a double attack against the bishop on c3 and the pawn on f7, and basically forcing uh, black's hand. Now at this point it was probably best to just play something like d5 and, and just try to give back some material and, and hope to survive, um, but well, black decides to grab the rook. Uh, again, this was the 1600s, players were pretty greedy, if you gave them the material, they <laughs> usually took it. Uh, and now it's up to white to prove the, the attack is worth a whole rook. So of course, bishop takes f7 check is the start, uh, forcing black to, to lose their castling rights. Black played king to f8, uh, and now bishop g5. Really strong developing move, I like this move a lot more than bishop a3 check, which also looks natural, but bishop a3 would simply run into d6 where white's bishop would then start feeling like it, it has no purpose. But on g5, the bishop is, of course, really strong. Black is forced to play knight e7 and, and put themselves in a pin. Uh, white goes knight to e5, just continuing the attack. Uh, and now the threat is simply to move this bishop away, maybe bishop g6 or uh, even bishop g8, with the threat of queen f7 mate uh, as the follow-up, where both white's bishop and the knight are controlling this square, making it very difficult for, for black to defend. Uh, in this game, Black played bishop takes d4, uh, white played bishop g6, black played d5, the only way to block the queen from f7, but white simply has queen f3. And so white's attack has been uh, pretty decisive for a couple moves now, and now we're, we're going to see the finish as black's king is uh, simply about to get mated on f7. Uh, black played bishop f5, white took, bishop takes e5, and now a final discovered check uh, leading to mate after bishop f6 takes takes, queen takes f6, and queen f7 mate. So this is really a fantastic game. I think uh, every improving or ambitious chess player should really know this game by heart, as it not only shows uh, the power of development, but also how to attack, how to keep the initiative going, and how to uh, finally set up that mating net and uh, checkmate the enemy king. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for checking out this video. We'll wrap it up there. Uh, if you want to see more videos from me, uh, there will be a link to my YouTube channel in the description as well. Please make sure to check it out and subscribe if you like it. Uh, and again, if you want to see these games and more games from Greco, do check out the Lee Chess Study uh, link below as well. Uh, until next time, take care.